Welcome to Coming to Life, a one-year journey through God's Word. My name is Katie Hawk. There were several men named James in the Bible. There was James, the son of Zebedee and brother of John. These brothers were both apostles of Jesus, and this James was the first apostle to be martyred for his faith. There was James, the son of Eltheus, another apostle who was sometimes referred to as James the Less, which does not mean he had less value, it simply meant that he was younger. He was also martyred for his faith. Then you had James, the father of Judas, but not the Judas that betrayed Jesus, the other Judas, who is sometimes identified in the Bible as Judas, not Iscariot. None of these men are the James that wrote the book of James, though. There was another one. This one was Jesus' brother, son of Mary and Joseph. He is sometimes referred to as James the Just. Interestingly, he did not believe that his brother was the Messiah until after he was resurrected. What an interesting illustration for us of someone who was exposed to Jesus, his teaching, and his miracles, yet didn't accept them as true. Thankfully, he came to a point that he could no longer deny his brother as the Messiah, and he went on to live his life for Jesus, sharing the gospel and heading up one of the very first churches in Jerusalem, and eventually also being martyred for his faith. This book was one of the earliest written in the New Testament, being dated at some time between 40 and 48 AD, which was only about 10 to 15 years after Jesus was crucified. James is writing to Jewish Christians scattered around the world and could have easily started this letter reminding everybody that he was the brother of Jesus. But instead, he called himself a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. He was fully committed to serving the Lord in humility. Serving is an important word to him, as you will see when you read this book. These 108 verses or five chapters focused greatly on the evidence faith should produce on a believer's actions. One of the most popular verses is, faith without works is dead. Now, James is not saying that works can save you. He is writing to Jewish believers who at one time believed that, but when they discover that faith in Christ is what saves you because of God's amazing grace, they went to the opposite extreme, believing they could live any lifestyle. Now, we know technically they can. However, if a person is truly saved or has genuine faith, they should desire to serve the one who has sacrificed everything for them. And James is saying that this should be evident in the way that they love and care for others. While this is categorized as a letter, it is really more of a collection of advice and practical teaching, much like the book of Proverbs. James offers examples of how to keep faith during trials, how to restrain your tongue, how to care for the orphans and widows, how not to show favoritism, and how to call on God for wisdom. Some of his guidance includes, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Or, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. There's submit yourself then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And my personal favorite, the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. James knew that believers would stumble. They would fail and sometimes boast, exaggerate, gossip, become angry, but he encourages his readers to press on and keep going. He says spiritual maturity will come and our stumbling will be less and less the more we grow. This book ends abruptly with no conclusion or farewell. James had given all this truth to believers and he was done. This is such a great book to study and learn from. It truly makes you reflect on your life and how you are serving the Lord. It brings great encouragement to anyone who is sick or suffering, helping them to trust in God and show patience for things to happen in His 
perfect timing. It also illustrates how to treat others, which is a piece of advice I will end this video with, the same advice James ended his letter with. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their ways will save them from death and cover a multitude of sins. I hope that the information shared today helps you grasp how interesting the Bible is so that you develop a passion for reading it. I pray that as you dig into scripture and go through your workbook, God speaks to you in exciting new ways and your spirit begins coming to life. God bless.